Guys, we live in a pretty fallen world. And I, I don't say that because it's election day, um, <laughs> but it is. Uh, but just over the last few weeks, I've had a lot of meetings with people who have been hurt. And I've had other meetings with people who have hurt others. And we just live in this fallen world. In fact, a lot of what I do as a pastor is, is get together with people who need advice or counsel on how to get through difficult situations and circumstances. Uh, and, and it's not always easy. It's not always pretty. And there's a lot of just hurt, a lot of pain, a lot of struggle. And, and so through that, one thing that comes up often in these meetings and in my response is our need to forgive and to go to people for forgiveness. Um, and, and so I, I want to talk about that tonight. And, and, but it, it can be hard to understand when to ask for forgiveness. Uh, it, it can be difficult to know what that really means. If I, I go to someone and ask for forgiveness, what what am I actually saying, and what does it require of me, and what am I letting them off the hook for? Uh, you know, we live in a society that is very quick and just very passionate about justice. We want justice. So then if, if we forgive people, are we letting go of justice? What does that look like? And we're in a society where we're, we're quick to confront. We want to call people out. So where does forgiveness play in that? And, and ultimately, I want this community to be a community that's quick to forgive and quick to ask for forgiveness. But there's just a lot of confusion on what that really looks like, what it looks like. And I want to hopefully clear that up tonight. You know, uh, for me, when it comes to forgiveness, there's one real situation in my life that just comes up quickly. Like, it's, it's the forefront of my mind. In fact, if you think for a second on times that you've needed to forgive or ask for forgiveness, is there something that comes up quickly? For me, it's my relationship with my mom. You know, I want to start this by saying I, I called my mom earlier today, and um, it hit me just as I was worshiping. You know, there was a time in my life when I couldn't do that because she wouldn't. She wouldn't pick up. And this, this relationship in my life has been the, the number one place where I've had to figure out, Lord, Am I walking in forgiveness? Because I really, really want to. Um, my mom celebrated two years sobriety last week, um, which is pretty stinking rad. We had this big party for her, and um, it's just really cool that I get to have these conversations with my mom, and I get to talk to her. And, um, and she gets to be in my life because I, for a long time, just didn't know if that would even be a, a possibility. You know, she, um, I, I grew up and she just was always drinking. I didn't know any different. So for a long time, I didn't know that I needed to forgive her because I didn't know necessarily that there was anything. Like, I didn't know to what degree I was dealing with junk because it was just part of, of life. And, um, and I didn't realize it was bad. And then it got worse, and it led to, to a couple years of her just not wanting to talk to me at all. And then I had kids, and, and we started trying to build a relationship, but I was saying, hey, there, this is a problem. My wife and I had kids, and we were trying to figure out this relationship and, and having my kids, grandma in their life, but not knowing if she was going to show up drunk or, or what would happen or what family gatherings would look like or if I was going to put my kids in danger or all of this stuff was just things I had to work through. And the constant thing was, how do I approach this? Because I don't want to hold on to anything that is not mine for me to hold on to. And I don't want to 
I don't want to, as a Christian, do anything that's not Christ-like. But this hurts, and it's difficult, and it's affecting me, and it's affecting my relationship with my wife, and it's affecting my relationship with my kids and other family members. And I have to figure out, am I going to forgive her? And, and what does that look like? And am I willing to forgive her even if she doesn't think she's doing anything wrong? Because there was a season like that. And am I willing to forgive her even if I don't know that she'll ever stop drinking? Because there was a season like that. And forgiveness is this. This is the definition I want to give you. To no longer hold blame or resentment against someone. You're releasing the debt you hold against them to pardon them. And so I had to ask, all right, my mom has done all these things and they just hurt. They stink. They're not fair. They're not right. They're, they're all these things. And am I willing to just say, I'm going to release this anger or this resentment or this hostility or this hurt? I'm going to release that, these, this debt I have against my mom. Am I willing to do that? And it's hard because that's complicated, right? That's not for, for you when you're going to forgive someone, that's not really an easy yes or no question. But I knew it was something that I needed to ask. And I knew the cost of not willing to do this was big. The cost of unwilling to forgive is really big in our life. It begins with this. It hurts our health. There's a whole bunch of studies that have been done. And if you hold on to resentment and bitterness, it is not good for you physically. It's not good for you. You're not going to get as much sleep. You're going to be stressed. Your blood pressure is going to raise. There's just a whole bunch of health effects that are not good for you. I mean, there are entire books. In fact, there's entire books that are all about forgiveness from a secular standpoint. And they argue you should forgive for you. And, and that's good for us to understand, but it doesn't end there for us. In fact, if that's the only reason you forgive, then you're being selfish. And you're approaching it in this very pragmatic way that doesn't care about these other effects of forgiveness. Because forgiveness isn't just for you. It's a lot about you. We're going to get to that. But it's also it, it, other people are affected by this. It hurts our relationships with others. You know, if you're in this community and you're holding on to resentment and holding on to bitterness, then you have walls that you are putting up. Because you're going to approach every relationship with that in the back of your mind, and you're not going to be as open or vulnerable or willing to trust as we need to be for this community to be strong in what it needs to be. When you enter into relationships, there are ways you're going to respond based on past hurts if you're still holding on to those, if you haven't walked in the freedom of forgiveness. It hurts our relationship with God. Isaiah 59, 2 says, But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. We can have this bitterness and this anger and we can hold on to it to a degree where it keeps God from hearing our prayers. That's crazy. But it's still, I had to get to a place and many of you have had to and all of us will have to get to a place where we have to ask ourselves, am I willing to forgive? Because, man, we do a lot of stuff that hurts our health. We do a lot of stuff that hurts our relationship with others and with God. And we shouldn't, but we have to at, really be honest. Am I willing to release these debts, this anger, this resentment? Am I willing to do that? And, and we don't just forgive because it hurts us physically and spiritually, but we also forgive because God calls us to forgive. Mark 11 says this, Whenever you stand praying, if you're praying before the Lord, forgive. And if you have anything against anyone so that your Father who is at, in heaven, it, and it says forgive if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father who is in heaven will also forgive you in your transgressions. But 
If you do not forgive, neither will your Father who is in heaven forgive your transgressions. That's one of the scariest verses in the Bible to me. I, I don't really like that verse. Because to me, what I had to do is I had to approach God and ask him over and over again, God, I want to forgive and I'm trying to forgive, but have I forgiven? And I want, like, am I doing it? And I don't want to just forgive because if I do forgive, I don't want to just forgive because of this, because is that really forgiving? I don't know if you're like me, but I've complicated the heck out of this. And the whole situation, because we're hurt and it's complicated and it's difficult, we're emotional. And that can seem really harsh. Like, God, how can you command me to forgive someone? And he could do that because he set the standard. Now, now first off, he could do that because he's God, period, full stop. God's ways are higher than ours. His thoughts greater than ours. If God tells us to do something, he doesn't need to justify why he gets to. He's God. And yet, that's the God who on the cross, after being beaten and betrayed and accused falsely of all these things, carrying his cross all the way up the mountain, being nailed through his hands, it says in Luke 23, but Jesus was saying, Father, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. And they cast lots, dividing up his garments among themselves. You see, God doesn't have to justify why we need to forgive, but he gets to because he's God, and he also, on top of that, on top of everything else, set the standard of forgiveness while he was on the cross. He's asking the Lord to forgive. And he, he demonstrated it in another part of the Gospels in this way, in this parable. It says, for this re reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. Now, when he began to settle them, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. But since he did not have the means to repay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, along with his wife and children and all that he had, and repayment was to be made. So the slave fell to the ground and prostrated himself before the Lord, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you everything. This guy owed him 10,000 talents. That is billions and billions of dollars. In Dave Hoffman's book, Fear of the Lord, he has a chapter on forgiveness, and he did the math. And he said if someone was to make 150 k a year, it would take them something like 200,000 lifetimes to pay off this debt. It's not ever going to happen. And the Lord of that slave felt compassion and released him and forgave him the debt. But the slave went out and found one of his other fellow slaves who owed him 100 denarii. A denarii is a day's worth of wages. That's a good chunk of change. That's three months' worth of wages. That's thousands of dollars. And he seized him and began to choke him, saying, pay back what you owe. So his fellow slave fell to the ground and began to plead with him, saying, have patience with me and I will repay you everything. But he was unwilling and went and threw him in prison until he should pay back what was owed. So when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were deeply grieved and came and reported to the Lord all that had happened. And then summoning him, he, his Lord said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not also have had mercy on your fellow slave in the same way that I had mercy on you? And his Lord moved with anger, handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that was owed him. He, he can't. The debt's too big. Jesus says, My heavenly Father will also do the same to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. We're called to forgive. We need to forgive because of, if we don't, we're going to hold on to this bitterness that's going to eat away at our bodies physically. 
They will eat away at our souls and put a wall up between us and God. They will deteriorate every other relationship we're in. And you guys know that because you know someone who's that bitter old person, that bitter angry person. And you see how it affects every encounter they have. But above all of that, we're called to forgive because we are that debtor that owes an impossible debt. We owe a debt we couldn't possibly pay. And Jesus forgave us on that cross. And this is, I, I was praying earlier as I was worshiping, and I was praying a, a, in some ways a really, like, not a fun prayer. I was asking the Lord, God, help me see my sin. Help me understand my sin. I want to give me a picture of what you've forgiven me of. And that's not a fun prayer. That's not a prayer that I'm like looking for to pray. But I know this, the greater, the greater I understand my sin, the better picture I have of what I've been saved for, the, the greater I'm going to, the, the quicker, the more often, with the greater um, desire, I'm going to run to my Lord gratefully, rejoicing from what he has saved me from. You know, I heard this story of this married couple that were in counseling. And they're in counseling because the wife of the husband cheated on him. And the husband was actually, he was willing to work it out. He's willing to work through this. So they're going through counseling and the pastor's a little bit surprised by how, how the, the husband, how quick and willing he is to do these things. To, to forgive, and it comes out that he cheated on his wife in the past, and she didn't know. And she starts to get all like, how dare you? And then she paused for a second. Because she, she has nothing to stand on. Now, they're both terrible. That You shouldn't do any of that. But we're that person that gets all angry and mad at someone who sinned when we are sinners. We get so riled up and upset and, and because someone's hurt us when, let's be real, we hurt people all the time. And Jesus is the only blameless one in the whole picture. And so we need to be humbled by our sin. We need to be acquainted, well acquainted with our sin. Not so that we hold on to it in shame, walking out with this heavy burden. Oh man, I'm a sinner and woe is me. But we need to walk around understanding that great is the forgiveness that we have received from Jesus Christ. For we were lost. We were destined to hell. And in that, Jesus saved us. And that paints everything going forward. That shapes how we forgive. Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also for, has forgiven you. So there, there's three sides to forgiveness. And the first one is simply this. We need to receive forgiveness. And if you haven't, then you're going to struggle with forgiving others. And I'm, I'm going to be honest, you're going to struggle with a lot. We need to receive forgiveness. And there's different ways that we, we kind of get by this or we, we skirt away from this. Because some of us, we don't want to for, receive forgiveness because we're like, I'm not that bad. That's how I grew up. That's, that's where I was before I really met the Lord. I thought, man, I'm not that bad. I haven't killed anyone, right? I haven't stolen anything crazy, small things here and there, right? I'm, I deserve to be in heaven. 
That's how I was for a long time. I just thought I, I, I wasn't that bad. God's standard is perfect, is holy, is righteousness, is blameless. And we all fall short. And it's interesting, the older I got, the more I realized how I fell short. I needed to receive forgiveness. Some of you have no problem seeing your sin. But you don't think you're worthy of forgiveness. That's the other side of the same coin. Some of you are, are thinking, look, I know exactly exactly what I've done. And I'm not worthy of that. Other people are. They can get it. But I'm too far gone. And that's a lie. You're, the Lord's arms are not too short to save. That's what it says in Psalms. But if we're going to give forgiveness, we must first receive forgiveness we must first go to the lord and recognize that he has washed us clean from our sins and not because you earned it not because you did anything to deserve it but because of his love because of his goodness because he is god when we recognize that we have been forgiven then and only then can we truly give forgiveness. That's the second part of it. Where we go to someone and we forgive them, we say, I'm going to release you of this anger, this resentment that I'm holding against you. I like referring to it like a, a financial thing, a debt. We're saying, all right, if it, and it gets a little tricky here. I didn't realize this until I was really preparing, but I, the way I've pictured it is if my mom because of all she did, if she had now accrued this resentment bank of however many dollars, $2,000, $3,000, I'm saying, I'm releasing you of that debt. I'm no longer going to come to you trying to make a man, trying to get that back. Right? I'm, so I, when I'm going to my mom and I'm saying, I'm rele releasing you of the hurt and the resentment. And I'm no longer going to hold these things against you. I'm not going to come to you and say, because you hurt me back then, and you did this, and because you said these words, and because you responded this way, and because you ignored me this way, or whatever it was, I'm, I'm saying, I'm releasing that debt. I'm no longer looking to collect. And you, you forgive someone. And look, every one of us, has been hurt, so every one of us has an opportunity to forgive. And this is completely, 100% in our control. I've heard people say, I just can't forgive them. No, you can, you're unwilling. Some people say, I can't forgive them because of something they're doing still. No, 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 it has nothing to do with them in this, this part. Like, it's up to you. And we, because we've been forgiven, can go to someone, no, even if they've done something that is really, really, really hurtful. But forgiveness is something that we must say, I am willing to release them of that. And let it go. And it's regardless of what they say or do. If they say, I don't, I don't care, I don't think I did anything wrong. That, that doesn't factor into you being willing to let go of these things. We are called to forgive. Now, here, here's the hard part. Like, what if they're, they're not there? If possible, it's, it's really helpful to go to someone and say, you've hurt me, but I want to forgive you. There's power there. There's power in that conversation. I've had people do that to me, and I had no clue I hurt them. Now, that it's been helpful, but some of you, that's not possible, because some of you need to forgive people who have hurt you, and they're no longer in your life. They've passed away. 
where they, they've, they're just gone. And you still need to forgive them. In this age group, most of our hurt comes from our parents. If some of you, your parents aren't with you anymore. But if you're still holding on to resentment and anger, you're called to forgive. Here's the other side of this. What about justice? What if they did something terrible? What if they did something really bad? Forgiveness isn't saying that you ignore that or, or that justice can't be carried out. Justice and forgiveness are two different things. And so we want to, Jesus answered both on the cross. He paid a debt on the cross that we owed. He carried out justice. And then he used that to forgive us. And we can often think, well, if I forgive them, then I'm letting go of any hope for justice. And no, what you're doing is saying, I'm not going to hold resentment, anger, or bitterness. I'm not going to hold on to that against this person. But if someone has abused you, you might owe it to everybody else to go seek justice. And that's not wrong. You can let the courts do their things, but you're saying, I'm not going to hold on to anger, resentment, bitterness, even if the, the result isn't what I want it to be. I'm not going to be holding on to those things. You know, if someone has stolen from you, this is where the debts analogy can get messed up. If someone has stolen from me, and let's say they steal 20 grand from me, I have a family to raise. I, got, I need to do, I, I need that money. And if I just let them off the hook, there's, there's other implications. Does he go do other things uh, and steal more money? What does that say about other people in society? You, you see how justice sometimes means you say, I'm not I'm going to let go of this anger. I'm not going to hold this bitterness against you. But uh, you can work towards paying me back. And that's okay. Those things can be separate. Here's the catch. Sometimes we can't, as a person who's been offended, sometimes we struggle to get that back and let go of the anger. And you've got to work. Some, some of those situations you can work out with God on your own. You know, we're called to receive forgiveness. We're called to give forgiveness. Part of that, and, and we're also called to be reconciled. Now, be reconciled is, in some ways, is us asking for others to forgive us. But here's the catch. When we go to someone because we've wronged them, and we ask for forgiveness, what we're saying is, I'm, I really pray that you will let go of resentment, anger, and bitterness. But as believers, we also say, but if there is some way that I can make restitution, I'm, I want to do that. If I've stolen from someone and I want to go before them, I want to be reconciled with them. I want to say, I want to do everything I can to make this up for, to you. And I'm not doing that to earn their forgiveness because they're separate. I'm doing that because of the repentance in my heart and I really want to make things right. So I'm gonna to work towards that. And through that reconciliation, I hope my repentance will be reflected and it will help those people properly forgive me. Zacchaeus, he set that stage where he said, man, if I've defrauded anyone, I'll pay him back. Restitution, again, it's not earning forgiveness. It's us working towards making things right. Now, because forgiveness, and I'm going to wrap this up pretty soon, but because forgiveness is so important, so powerful, we make it really complicated. So there's a bunch of fallacies that come up. And I just want to run through these crazy quick. And the first thing is this. If I forgive them, then I'm saying what they did is okay. That's just not true. Oh, man, they're all up there. All right, don't read ahead. <laughs> Forgiveness isn't you saying it's okay. 
It's you saying, I'm not going to hold on to these things, the anger, the resentment, and the bitterness, to my detriment, to your detriment, to my re- relationship with God, to this. Is a, I'm not. You know, when I forgave my mom and I did forgive her, I wasn't saying that what you did was okay. What I was saying is, I don't want to hold on to it. I don't want to become God and and figure out all it. I just want to let these things go and trust God to work out justice and walk in forgiveness. I want to walk in freedom. I want to let these things go. Fallacy two is I forgave them for that, so I'm done with it. And forgiveness is not this one and done thing. This is hard. This, is, this part I didn't know really until I started walking this through with my mom because I, I would forgive her, and then the next day she would do something that would hurt me again. Or I would forgive her, and then the next day I would remi- be reminded of something she had done in the past and it hurt me again. And so forgiveness is often something, a process that you walk through. And you might have to forgive someone every day for a year, for two years. Peter went to Jesus and said, how many times do we have to forgive someone? And Jesus basically said, you don't stop. You just keep forgiving. Fallacy three, time wounds, time heals all wounds. You know, I've had cuts and sores that I I just ignored and they didn't get better. They got infected. And that's what happens often with bitterness, resentment, and anger. When we let it, let time pass, it festers. You got to take care of it. We're not promised more time. Fallacy 4, if I forgive them, then I must trust them again. Just like forgiveness and justice are two different things, forgiveness and trust are two different things. We're called to forgive someone, but that doesn't mean you immediately trust them with whatever. If, you, if someone, you gave them $100 and they never paid you back, doesn't mean that you, you need to forgive them, but it doesn't mean that you have to go lend them more money. I will tell you this, if you do, It would be powerful. But there are circumstances where it's not healthy, where it's not good for your family or for your life. So you need to let them slowly work that up, that trust again. Fallacy 5, I'll forgive them if they change. That's not forgiveness. That's, That's saying, hey, they have to earn it. They have to, that's you saying you have a debt and you have to make up for that debt, pay that debt. It's not forgiveness. Give that debt to Jesus. Fallacy six, forgiving will take away the power I have over the situation. Honestly, that last one I see all the time. And they, you never phrase it that way, but you think that. If I forgive them, right now there's hurt that they owe me. And there's hurt that I get to hold on to and I get to cling to. And there's hurt, there's things that if I forgive them, then I can't use these things as either a crutch or as a reason to justify what I'm doing or as a reason to justify my hurt against them. And so you're saying, if I forgive them, I'm going to lose that. And you will lose the power to do those things, but those things will only destroy you. You're handing it over. You're saying, I'm no longer going to hold on to these things that are poison. David Hoffman said, it's, forgiveness is simple, but it's not easy. Can I have the band come up? And this, is, this is really true. Because the definition of simple is not that crazy. But the action of forgiving can be. But this is why stories of forgiveness are so powerful. Because they demonstrate something that apart from Jesus just doesn't make a lot of sense. Corey Ten Boom, I, I, I've talked about her before here. She was in a, a concentration camp 
because she was hiding Jews from the Nazis. In that concentration camp, she was basically starved to bones and treated inhumanely. And her sister, who was with her, died because of the conditions. And two years after she got out, she was speaking of her time there and how she leaned on and trusted into the Lord. And she looked out in the audience and she recognized a man. He was wearing a different uniform, a different, different clothes, but it was very clear who the guy was. It was one of the prison guards in the concentration camp. A cruel man. And, and she says that she was just stressing out and stressing and, and anxious the whole time. And then afterwards, that same man with the eyes that she, she could recognize from anywhere came up to her and she said, hey, you, you talked about this concentration camp. I was a guard there. And when it, it got overtaken, I gave my life to the Lord. He said, I know Jesus forgives me, but will you? And she said that in that moment, nothing, no part of her wanted to forgive, her, forgive him because she thought, no, do you know what you did to my sister who's not here with me anymore? Do you know what I endured? You, like you chose, you, could, you didn't have to do those things. And she was reminded that she had been forgiven. This is my last point. When we forgive others, we don't have to have it all together and figured out and be happy about it. In fact, I believe that you could start offering forgiveness and still have some anger, resentment, and bitterness. but that you could start that process trusting the Lord and doing it out of obedience, recognizing that he has forgiven you and so you are called to forgive. And I believe our God is faithful that in that process, he will help you get to a place where even that anger that you have in the beginning is, is taken away. Court Ten Boom said she reached out her hand because she had to, because Jesus called her to. But in obedience, by the time she reached out, something changed in her heart and she eventually embraced the man and they wept. Forgiveness is one of those things that it's simple, but it's not easy. It's difficult, but it's good. And we're called to do it because Jesus forgave us.